course, welcome back to the Sports Max Zone, and we're going to continue our discussion with Simon Evans on the Europa League. George, handing it back to you. Yeah, so so Simon, I was looking at the result: West Brom against Rapid Vienna. Uh, Declan Rice uh, scoring. Uh, Mike, uh, Mikhail Antonio assist. The Reggae Boys fans will be happy to see that. And then, of course, Saida Benarama uh, scoring the second goal. Uh, West Ham controlling the group and uh, you have to say they were much the better side. Perhaps it is that they should have won by more than two goals. Yeah, and actually a really good assist from Mikhail Antonio as well. A really good bit of skill and clever clever ball across to Declan Rice who, who'd made a brilliant run from deep in midfield. He doesn't do that enough, I don't think, Declan Rice. I think he's got too comfortable playing that, that holding role. But West Ham really starting to look like a team. And, and they were saying before this game, their players were saying they want to win the Europa League. And I, I like that attitude. It's a, it's a contrast to what we, what we saw from Leicester City tonight. And, and also, you know, they've knocked Manchester United out of the Carabao Cup with their reserve side. Admittedly, United had their reserve side out as well. But I was at that game and you just see they're playing the same way. They bring the second team players in and they're playing in the same system. And that tells you what a good job David Moyes is doing, the manager, when you can change your side about, make nine or ten changes and, and still have the same system of play. That's very impressive. Yeah, last thing for me on the Europa League, the two, the two other British teams, well, Scottish teams, let's be precise, uh, Sparta Prague beating uh, Celtic, beating Rangers 1-0 and Bayer Leverkusen stuffing uh, a Celtic 4-0. Uh, you know, every time the Europa League comes around, I'm hoping that one, if not the two Celt uh, Scottish teams go far. But it's been a struggle. It has. And, it, you know, it comes back to what's become an age-old debate now in Scottish football, which is, is, is the step up from their domestic league to European competition just too high now? You know, it was not so long ago, you know, if, well, it's quite a while ago now, isn't it? 20... 20 odd years ago, the Scottish League was, you know, producing players who were regularly going and playing in the Premier League and were signing players who were playing in Italy and so on. It's a long way from that. The money isn't there in Scottish football. And so they're playing against relatively weak opponents domestically. And then they go abroad and they're playing teams from the Bundesliga and struggling, you know. And Rangers are a team who I, who I, I think, you know, could with the squad they've got, make an impact in this competition. But for Salty, that's a really disappointing result, but not a massive shock, I have to say. Right, and that's it there now for our Europa League segment. We're going to continue. A West Brom fan, Simon Silwood, will serve time in a British prison. Silwood was sentenced to eight weeks imprisonment at the Birmingham Magistrates Court in England on Thursday. The 50-year-old was found guilty on September 9th of racially abusing West Brom's Romain Sawyers after the 5-0 home loss to Manchester City in the English Premier League on January 26. Sawyer plays internationally for St. Kitts and Nevis. After the match, Silwood posted on Facebook that Sawyers would win the Baboon Door. The Ballon d'Or is an award given by France Football to the player rated as the best in the world in the preceding year. In his defense, Silwood said the message was stupid, not racial. Sawyers, who is currently on loan to Stoke City, said he was left feeling harassed, alarmed and distressed. Silwood was ordered to pay Sawyers £500 in compensation and was banned for life by West Brom. Simon Evans is still here with us. Simon, what do you think about this situation and, and the fact that he's saying, oh, it was simply a typo, an error on his phone? Well, the judge didn't go along with that, did he? So that's, that's all we need to say about that, really. Um, I think what's interesting about this case is that the special unit of the British police that now deals with online hate crimes and specifically with online hate crimes against sports people really pursued this case and made sure it got to court and made sure that, that there was a, a prosecution brought. And, um, you know, there's been a, an awful lot of discussion about this in England, especially after the abuse that the England players received from, uh, you know, after the Euro uh, 2020 final and about, uh, you know, a lot of attention focused on what the social media companies can do. But, you know, they, this is a matter for the law. And, and taking it in like this, they've made an example of him, I think it's fair to say. And, um, you know, I don't think I've heard of any cases anywhere else in the world where fans have been sent to jail for making online racist comments against footballers. So for those people who've been calling for strong action, I think this is pretty strong action. 
Yeah, and definitely a landmark ruling where football is concerned and society, especially when it comes to this ugly topic of racism. Do you get the sense that this ruling will deter um, people who may be, you know, susceptible or so used to uh, being racially abusive to players on by hiding behind these fake names on social media and whatnot, that this might probably deter them from engaging in such activities? It might deter some. I think, uh, you know, I think one of the sad realities we have to face with this, that the idea that we can ever reach a point where there won't be any of this is probably a little bit unrealistic, unfortunately, you know, because there are people who are going to go and want to make these kind of comments and, uh, you know, to try and get out of the global population, they can send it from anywhere in the world. I did some research about some of the abuse that went on last season and, and they, they believed, you know, a majority of it is coming from outside of England, um, from all over the world, from all kinds of places. You would never think that would be sending abuse to players in the championship and so on. So the idea it can be eliminated completely, I don't think is realistic. But I think that what this court ruling does, it says to anyone in Britain, if you're thinking of going online and making uh, a racist comment, there is a chance you'll end up in jail. And I think that is a deterring effect. Yes, yeah, so I asked about the fans' reaction to this ruling. Now I'll ask you, do you get the sense that now players will feel a sort of confidence to report incidents of being racially abused online, as if they will get some sort of justice? Yeah, I think so. And I think, I think that's already there, to be fair. I mean, players are reporting it. They're, the clubs are reporting it. There's a lot of uh, monitoring systems in place. The Premier League have one in place. The Football League have one. All the clubs, uh, the, the major clubs, have their own uh, ways of monitoring this and then reporting it. There are different uh, organizations like Kick It Out and so on where you can report any abuse that's not online as well, you know, inside the stadium. There's even an app when you go into a Premier League ground. If you hear someone making a racial comment, personally, I think you should confront them yourself face to face. But there's also a way you can just send uh, discreetly uh, a message to an app identifying uh, the seat that they're sitting in and so on. So there's lots of ways to report and monitor this activity. What's been missing has been action um, to punish people doing this, and that's what's happened uh, with this ruling today. Yeah, and Simon, of course, we here in the Caribbean would hope that, you know, this Simon Silwood case would, you know, just deter people. It, as you said, we can't get rid of it, but at least we can lessen it. Yeah, and he sends a message. He does send a message, a really strong message. I think there's been there's been a lot of campaigning about this, that, you know, on television and across yeah. the media, players, politicians, all kinds of people saying enough is enough. The players are taking the knee before every game. So the, the message has been pretty clear. Um, the, the concern has been that it's not been backed up by action. Um, there will always be people who will say it should be stronger action, that this isn't enough, that isn't enough. But um, for somebody to actually go to jail uh, now, I think it, it is a strong message and hopefully it will uh, certainly for the next generation of fans coming through make them, uh, you know, not consider even doing this kind of thing. All right, Simon. Well, thank you so much for your time. We'll connect again soon. Cheers. Thanks. All right, Simon Evans, they are international football correspondent. We go to break and I'll be back with Zone Update number two.